from Toy to King. How to become a top-notch graffiti writer in five steps. First of all, what is graffiti? Well, that's really difficult to explain, because graffiti means many different things to all kinds of people. While your 80-year-old neighbor might associate graffiti with vandalism, others see graffiti as an art form. Generally speaking, graffiti is used to describe everything from text and scratched names on train windows to graffiti-influenced artwork on canvas. Now, before you grab daddy's car paint and go out hitting a wall, you should stop for a sec and ask yourself, why do I want to become a writer? Think carefully and consider why you want to get into graffiti. For some it's a way to express themselves, their ideas, beliefs and feelings. However, others are in it for all the wrong reasons. Taking revenge on your principal for kicking you out of school is not a good reason. Once you make up your mind and come to the conclusion that graffiti is the best tool to express yourself, that's what you gotta do. First step. Find a name. When thinking of a name that suits you, you have to make sure that it represents your personality. With a style master of disasters too long and C is too short, you're free to write whatever you feel like. Usually it's better if your name is short and sharp as it can be written faster and it's easier for people to remember. It is important that under no circumstances you write your real name or any variation of it. You don't want to make it too easy for the police to catch it. But don't go around and call yourself Dime, Claw, Lumit, Scene or Ticket because they already taken. So sit down and do some research first. Second step. Get the materials. Out there you can find an endless amount of materials that you can use to work with. Always remember, everything is allowed, nothing is prohibited. The following list is just a recommendation so you have basic equipment to start with. Every writer owns something that is called a black book. It is a graffiti artist's sketchbook and one of his most precious possessions. He captures his ideas in there and collects sketches from fellow writers. To make your sketches you can use pencils, pens and permanent markers. For the latest spraying process there is a bunch of other materials you should get as well. Most important, the cans. There is a massive industry out there that provides you zillions of spray cans. You can get most of the cans in various sizes, each for a different purpose. The spray can's best friend is the cap or nozzle. That's this little piece of plastic that you stick into your can to get the paint out in, hopefully just one direction. There is hundreds of different types and all with different qualities. You will learn the difference by the time. As the spray cans are filled with aerosol paint, they release toxic gases which can harm your respiratory system. Therefore, you should always wear a respiratory mask, especially if you're working indoors and you can't ventilate the premises properly. Third step. So far we just prepared everything, but now we're getting serious. We will start with a tag. That's your mark and signature as a writer, and it should represent your style. At the beginning it'll probably look a bit shabby, but don't worry, you can always polish and refine it with the time. Check out how other writers create their tags and look for some inspiration. But make sure you don't copy their style as this will be called biting and is a typical mistake of toys. You should also avoid adding little details as crowns to your tag as they are reserved for the kings and queens in the scene. Notice that mostly self-proclaimed kings add crowns to their tags. The real masters usually renounce to add them. So get your black book and pen and start writing your name in all kinds of ways. While you're at it, you can also create your own alphabet. Once you've got a satisfying design, it's time to practice. Get a can, some caps and a marker and go out to the streets. Write your name all over the city. On telephone and post boxes, walls, street signs, benches, trains, buses and waste containers. Do not write your name on private property, cars, churches or memorial places. If you feel confident with tagging your name, you can go a step further and create a throw up. A throw is a recognizable logo for others to identify you and it sits between a tag and a piece in terms of complexity and time investment. It usually consists of a one color outline and a one color fill in. Four step. It's time to grow as a writer and do something serious and meaningful. Start learning letter construction and draw a sketch for your piece. There are blockbusters, bubble styles, silver styles, wild styles, 3D styles and many more. Try out as many as possible and find your own style. Now, with your sketch you can go out and hit a wall. First you should start practicing in a lonely and hidden spot. You can go over and over your pictures until you feel quick enough to do some hardcore action. For example, bombing a train. You could start with a flying panel or a window down and move over to an end to end, a top to bottom or a whole car. If you got some friends to help you, you could also try to paint a married couple or family couple. If you don't have any trains in your town or you prefer to stay away off a track, you could do some heaven spots. These are pieces painted in hard to reach places such as rooftops and freeway signs. Such pieces often pose dangerous challenges to execute but may increase your notoriety. 
as famous the main goal of most writers, you could try to become an old city king. Fifth step. If you already achieved all the main goals in a writer's career, you could build a crew. For cover, support, inspiration and some good laughs. You could paint in several spots at the same time to spread the name, and you could paint concept walls, whole cars and take part in a battle against another crew to prove your skills. Most crews have a two or three letter abbreviation they write. Here's some world famous crews that you should definitely check out. Further ideas. Graffiti writers are restless and always looking for new ideas. In case you're still willing to do more, you could create your own character, paint your masterpiece or paint canvases and sell them. If you want to make a living out of graffiti, you should study graphic design or become a tattoo artist. Final warning. A Mr. Manor charge, J-time, community service or fines are all possible punishments for illegal graffiti. Besides this, it can also happen that angry people punch you, you get bitten by a dog, electrocuted on the race, or you fall down from a building. Well, no risk, no fun, huh? So grab your cans and bump the world. <laughs>